What if I told you it was possible to take a photo from a printer and with just a simple piece of plastic, you could create a 3D image. This type of image is called a lenticular print, but most of them like this one only show a couple of images. So it doesn't create any type of 3D effect. I think I can give them an upgrade. I've done some calculations and I believe I can make one of these using 12 images instead of just two. Here's my plan. I'm going to use some 3D software to create sets of images in a sequence so that when you flip back and forth, you'll be able to see this 3D effect, almost like a hologram. So much better than two images. <laughs> Actually, I think those are cool too. If this 3D effect works, I'll create a bunch of different prints to show you the amazing things you can make. Now, this isn't an easy task. From the research I did, it seems like the popularity of lenticular prints pretty much died out in the 70s and 80s, with smaller use cases here and there ever since. As far as I know, this print I had made is one of the last custom ones you could easily order for cheap. And you can actually get it from Walgreens. It's only $4, but it's limited to two photos and this one size. Everything else I could find seems pretty expensive or usually has a limit of three images. That's because these are really, really hard to make. And that's just with a couple images. It seems like no one even wants to attempt these 3D ones that I wanna make. So I have run into plenty of challenges. First, getting your hands on this lens that makes it possible isn't so easy. A lot of people actually sell them as invisibility shields because a lot of YouTubers started making videos featuring this type of product. I also ended up buying multiple sets of sheets due to various complications. I was a bit ambitious at the start, wanting to make a huge poster, but I kept downsizing because of printing or budgeting issues, so posters will have to wait for another time. Another big challenge was with software. I had this question and you might as well, but if I have these 12 images and this lens, how do I put all of that together into one print? Well, software is the answer, and the process is called dramatic. <laughs> it's the process of taking all the images and weaving them together in a specific way for that particular lens. It ends up looking kind of crazy and the software for doing it is either really old and free or old and expensive. So I chose the free version. A few other smaller challenges I ran into were things like 3D rendering times, like this one scene that estimated a single frame was going to take over five hours to complete. Or another challenge was just making sure that the printer resolution, lenticular lens, and images all work together. I even bought a new printer to help solve some issues, but the new lens I bought didn't work with that printer brand, so it was all just very tedious. Anyway, enough about challenges. Let's take a quick second to just understand a little bit about how this works. If you take a cross section of one of these lenses, you would see a flat side and a side with a bunch of bumps. These bumps reflect the image coming from the flat side into separate angles. When you look through the side with bumps, you end up seeing one fraction of the surface below rather than the entire surface. And as you change angles, the lens reveals different sections one at a time. So the goal is actually pretty simple. Looking at a single bump or lenticule, you need to figure out how many images you can fit under it according to your printer, and then make sure they're printed squarely under each lenticule. Otherwise, the print will slowly become off and the effect will be ruined. And that's the main reason the process for this is so complicated. It really comes down to millimeters of accuracy. So after a lot of trial and error, I finally figured it out. And I don't know if you want to hear the process for making just one of these from start to finish. I'll tell you anyway. First, I tried to think of an idea that would look interesting. I sketched out the concept loosely so I could reference it later. Moved over to Blender, the 3D software I use. Created the models for everything. Set up the camera, focal point, and animation. Added in textures for everything. Added lighting. Rendered the scene, now knowing it's going to take forever with my current hardware. Created and performed a pitch test for the lens. It's unfortunately not as fun as it looks. Interlaced the images, printed out that final image, lined it up, laminated, and trimmed it. But then you would realize the effect still doesn't work. So you have to redo most of that process. I guess that's why I've been working on this idea since... July? <laughs> Whoops. What have I done? This is taking forever. Will it even look good on camera? Who am I? Anyone watch this? Hey, you should subscribe. Um, can we get back to the video? Anyway, here's that scene that I showed at the very beginning, finally put together. I honestly can't believe it works. 
Also, I found that if you put them over a light, it makes it a bit easier to see on camera. But there's no other trick here. This is just a light and the print, and it feels like I'm actually looking into this scene. While this whole thing was incredibly hard to do, once I figured out the first one, it wasn't too difficult to create some other scenes to do the same process for. This is a rose I made to showcase a more typical 3D model. And with the light, it really brings out the colors more. I also thought something having to do with time would be interesting. So I made the simulation of a bullet breaking through glass. It didn't end up working as well as the others, but it's still fun to have. One of my personal favorites was this cartoon look for a classic car. I thought it would be super cool to have something that looked like it was in 2D until you rotate it. And I just love how this turned out. Just seeing the extra detail inside the car is so fun. And imagine if you had this as a poster you walk by on a wall. I also made a Shrek one where his eyes follow you. And yeah, it turned out a little creepy. A quick disclaimer, I created the scenes and models for almost everything in this video, but it is very time consuming. So just calling out that I did download free models for the car and Shrek scenes as a starting point. If you're new or interested in 3D software, there are tons of resources like this to help you get started. And one last bonus print I did was a variation of that desk scene, but this one shifts to night. I think I like it better than the original, although it's a bit more subtle than I intended because the digital files definitely look a lot more like nighttime. This project has been a roller coaster, but I now know how to make lenticular prints, which I can hopefully make larger sizes one day. If you enjoy these types of projects, let me know in the comments. I gotta figure out what project I'm doing next, but at least I have this chill desk scene that I can always look at. And you can too. I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>